Are you wondering how to tackle scanning all those boxes of old family photos you've got? Let me tell you, the Epson Fast Photo 680W is the scanner to get the job done. Hi, I'm Molly Bartelt. I own Pixology, where we have organized and scanned millions of photos over the past 10 years for our clients. The Epson Fast Photo 680W is the best consumer solution for doing this project yourself, costing around four to six hundred dollars depending on where you purchase it. It can help you scan hundreds and hundreds of pictures in one day. Before you start scanning photos, I highly recommend that you organize them first. If you need help doing this, check out our guide up there. It is our roadmap on how we organize pictures here. Making good batches is key to being able to enjoy your digital pictures when you're done scanning. I'm gonna show you how to use the Epson Fast Photo Scanner. And that way, if you're thinking about purchasing it, you'll have more information on whether this is the scanner for you. Or if you've got it already, you're gonna learn the settings that we use on some of our projects here, and that might be helpful for you. So right now we are looking at the main view of the program when we open the scanning software. And there are a couple things to notice here. The folder, this is just showing us what we're looking at. So if you wanna change that, you can click on the folder icon and select a different folder to view. But most often it will show what you have last scanned. So right now I haven't scanned anything and it's empty, the view is empty. Now we are gonna look at the settings area and when this opens, uh, you'll be probably starting in the organization area. This is where we're gonna select a folder for your files. And we do not wanna save the files to photos. This is showing up because I'm using a Mac. And we do not wanna select that. We wanna just pick the folder that the scans are gonna to go to. So, we do that by choosing the folder. So I'm gonna click the folder icon again here and select new folder. And we are gonna be scanning some photos from a 1990 wedding. And I'm gonna just type in the name of the folder. Now we teach that we name the pictures also the same name as the folder. So I'm gonna just copy that um, name I'll click create and now this folder is in the scanned photos folder. So I open it and now I know my pictures will be saved there. Next I want to give a file name prefix. So I'm going to apparently retype the name 1995-05R wedding. And what's nice is this scanning software gives you a divider and a counter right off the bat. Then we don't want to check prompt me to describe each batch of photos before scanning. That would be used if we wouldn't have done all the organization ahead of time. We don't need to select that. Then you can go down to enhancements after setting your folder and file name. And here you can select the enhancements that you want. Now we recommend scanning and just saving the original picture and not adding enhancements with one exception. The color photos from the 1960s and 70s can be dramatically improved uh, when you add the enhancements. So you can just click all of them when you're scanning really faded photos or if you want to do this you know with other pictures that you have so when you select these you'll have the choice to apply the enhancements directly to the scanned photo or to a second copy of the photo. They recommend that you save both copies, but we think that kind of clutters your organization efforts. So pick one or the other and you'll decide what's best for you. As for us, we only apply the enhancements for color pictures in the 1960s and 70s, and then we apply it directly to the scanned photo. So I am going to uncheck all of this because I am going to be scanning a batch of pictures from the 1990s. Next, under Scan Settings, 
you most likely will be using the standard photo setting for most of your pictures. And 600 dots per inch is what you'll select. And you'll choose JPEG unless you are planning on super editing your pictures in the future. You could select TIFF, but JPEGs work 99% of the time. Then if you happen to have pictures that might have writing on the back of them, the scanner will scan the back sides and save only those that have dark printing or handwriting. So you can save the settings there as you like. For my purposes on these 1990s photos, I don't need the writing on the back if there even is any. So I'm going to uncheck it. And then lastly, we'll just look into the advanced settings. And I think it's nice to have auto rotation on, um, curled photo correction, reduced line and streaks. All of that is handy to check off. Now the auto rotation supposedly will rotate your vertical pictures for you. It's not perfect, but it, it does seem to help. So those are the settings that we want to look at. And then we hit close. So remember, I chose that 1990-05 folder to scan these pictures to. And you can see that I'm still looking at the scanned photos folder. That's okay. So I'm going to take my first batch of pictures and I'm going to start scanning them. So I've loaded in about 20 pictures and these are just going to be scanning here. And we'll let that kind of run while uh, we wait. I will mention that the scanner does give you options to continue scanning. And it does not seem to matter in terms of the order. But I want you to really think about you know, looking at the pictures and making sure they're in the order that you want. That is the first set of pictures, and I'm going to click Done Scanning. All right, so there was 12 pictures in there, and I am going to take the stack off the scanner, and I'm going to just turn them over. All right, so the first one is on the bottom. Okay, now here we can see that my 12 pictures have scanned and some of them didn't auto rotate and some of them did so it tried if you just stop and look at the pictures you turned upside down and make sure each one of them scanned that's a good double check so that is um, up to you so we're, we'll scan one more batch of these wedding pictures and and then uh, I will also just for demonstration's sake, uh, click on the continue to scanning them instead of clicking done scanning so we can make sure that these are scanning in the order that we expect. So that was uh, one batch and then this batch that I'm putting in is ending with um, the bridesmaids and the groomsmen walking back down the aisle. So we're going to click scan next batch and just make sure that that last photo ends up in the last position. So you remember the scanner is pulling from the bottom and it reverses them when the batch is done scanning. Now we're going to click done scanning. So that 22 photos was actually two bit smaller batches. And the last photo should be of a bridesmaid and a groomsman walking back down the aisle after the wedding ceremony is over. There we go. So it scanned them. It kind of refreshes the whole view of pictures. So now the 34 pictures are in there. And that bridesmaid and groomsman is right there walking out the church. So that's a good scenario. So it doesn't matter if you hit done scanning or next batch. Um, I do want to point out that again pick up the pictures and double check they're all in there. Sometimes uh, the scanner will just skip them here and there and you don't want to miss one and then find out later or you know maybe it won't even be that important of a picture but it's good to double check so now I've got my pictures in there you can see the auto rotate completely missed it on some of these but rotating is something that you can do um, later our job is to get through the scanning 
So next, I'm going to scan those uh, 1961 pictures. And just to go back to organization here and show you, I'm going to change the folder. And I don't want it to be in our wedding. I want it to be in 1961 photos. So I just type in 1961 photos, create. And now it, it put me right in there. I'm going to open it. And of course, I'm going to change the name, 1961 photos. And I will click close. So once again, our view is the last batch that we scanned, but once we start scanning this little section of pictures I've got, um, that will go away. So I'm going to click Start Scanning, and we'll get these little black and whites through from 1961. And that just shows you, you know, the scanner does seem to work really good when you have the same sizes of photos together, but you can have some variation in it. All right, so that is done. And then I want to show you that Polaroids are definitely a thicker photo, and I'm going to just demonstrate scanning a Polaroid. I just need to go back to settings and go to scan settings, and select instant photo. These are thicker and the scanner adjusts somehow to get that through. So I'm gonna click close and then I'm gonna click start scanning. And now this Polaroid will go through without a problem. And I'll click done scanning and there it is. The scanner does come with a protective sheet for your fragile pictures and for tiny, tiny pictures. So I'm just going to scan this so that you can see how it works. I'm placing a really um, fragile newspaper article in it and I'm flattening it out so that you can you know, feel safe about something like this going through the scanner and we'll watch it go through. We'll click Done Scanning. And there is that scan. It turned out pretty good. So that wraps up the demonstration of the Epson Fast Photo Scanner. I hope that was helpful for you. Now, if you are interested in purchasing one, I would definitely check out Epson's refurbished page. I've got a link for you down below because you can save a couple hundred dollars there. And if you are still trying to figure out how to organize all of this, I do have this video for you to watch next. That's it for now. Thank you so much for joining and we'll see you the next time. Mm -hmm.